Uh, the Honourable David Cunliffe. Mr Chairman, look, it's a delight to take a call on this important statutes amendment bill, which of course Labor will be supporting. Sir, this is part of a long tradition of tidy up and remedial matters. And for folks at home, what happens with the statutes amendment is that uh, uh, this, on the second reading we, we go through it, we satisfy ourselves that there's nothing in here that belongs in a more substantive uh, policy uh, type bill. And then we send it off its way uh, to the Government Administration Committee and, uh, sorry, it comes, it's come back and uh, we, we hear any qualifications and we pass it into law. And it saves the House time uh, by grouping up a whole bunch of issues which, frankly, uh, really aren't supposed to have a great deal of policy content. They're tidy-ups, they're corrections. Now that brings me then to a couple of little issues. Uh, firstly, can I commend the Minister responsible for the Commodity Levies Act in Part 5? Uh, because it's done the right thing and it's got a sunset clause in it. Levies will be enforced no more than six years unless extended. That's really good practice and we're pleased to see that in there from a regulations review point of view. However, in the next part, Part 6, the Community Trusts Act inserts Section 16A which is over a page long, which is a process for adjusting the areas of a community trust or indeed merging part or the whole of two community trusts. Now, community trusts uh, were set up uh, to accommodate the funds of a number of the trustee savings banks. Many of them have hundreds of millions of dollars in them. This is actually a pretty substantive provision. And I would welcome a government speaker just explaining to us, and perhaps the Attorney General might want to take a call or the Minister responsible, and explain to us how uh, Part 6, Section 16A is not a policy matter. And uh, if it's not a policy matter, or if it is a policy matter, what is it doing in a statutes amendment bill? It was with a little chuckle, sir, that I looked at Part 9 which was around the Crown Entities Act. Because you'll recall, uh, Mr Speaker, that this House has had some extensive debates on the merits or demerits of the so-called mixed ownership model, where a state-owned enterprise or a Crown entity had part of its shareholding hived off to the private sector for the supposed benefit of scrutiny by analysts, but of course, actually, uh, to enrich a whole lot of middlemen uh, in the time-honoured tradition of the National Party. Well, sir, this is really interesting because section 110 of uh, part 9 actually reinforces one of the most important provisions in the old state-owned enterprise model. That is the power of ministers to give a direction to the Crown entity which they must by law follow. And this tidy up uh, actually writes into law more specifically the obligations of those Crown entities which I assume and Minister will correct us if this is otherwise, includes a former SOEs now governed under the mixed ownership model. What an incredible U-turn. Not one that the opposition uh, wholly is disappointed to see, because we rather think the idea of a ministerial direction power is a useful protection for the public interest. Uh, but I think it shows that the mixed ownership model went too far, got a little too shoddy, and now they're backtracking, which is probably a good thing. You go to part 21, sir, the Protection of Personal and Property Rights Act of 1988. There are a number of reasonably significant amendments uh, in 4A, 6A over the page, 95A, around the revocation of enduring powers of attorney. Again, sir, I think this pushes the envelope of what you would normally see in a statutes amendment bill. Uh, they are matters of policy, albeit minor. However, Sir, we, we're supporting this bill because although one or two of these things come a little bit close to the standing orders line, we respect the overall intent of the process, which is to save the House time and to save the taxpayer money by grouping up a whole lot of fiddly little amendments into one legislative vehicle. Which is what brings me to the topic of denuclearisation, and in specifically the denuke caracoisation of the order paper from uh, things like the luggage handling advertising bill, which could have fitted in the statutes amendment bill because, frankly, it's less substantive 
than any of the amendments that I've just spent the last five minutes reading out. It's much more important to give a ministerial direction power to a state-owned enterprise that could affect hundreds of millions of dollars of public investment than it is to change the advertising method for a lost bag. It's far more substantive, sir, to merge two community trusts which hold hundreds of millions of dollars in assets than it is to spend the House's time debating whether a local newspaper notice or an email notification for a lost handbag is the most appropriate way to advertise it. So that's what I mean by denuclearisation of the order paper. And, you know, frankly, we've had enough of nuclear testing. The North Koreans have done some of it this week, and that's a bad thing. And it's a bad thing to see the government nuclear testing on the House with the order paper with this lost baggage bill. Or what we're really calling for, sir, is a case of nuke tuck. We want to tuck the nuke bill into this bill to save the House time. Uh, or we could send it to nuke loafer. Uh, or perhaps we could follow the old dictum that a nuke in time, a nuke in time saves nine. And it would be really good to save nine times the time that is going to be spent on Nuke Caraco's bloomin' waste of space bill uh, and put it in the statute's amendment bill. But of course these things don't happen by accident. The highly paid strategists and spin doctors of the National Party spent hours around the bonfires and the beehive working out new ways to sucker the public of New Zealand into the proposition that they know what they're doing, sir. And that's why they are wasting the House's time with trivial, inane pieces of members' legislation, like New Caraco's bill, which don't go unnoticed by the perspicacious personnel of the press gallery. I merit Sir one Vernon Small, who observes as follows. Ridicule has been heaped upon List MP Nuke Caraco's bill to exempt airports from having to advertise the auction of lost property in their local newspaper. And he goes on as to why that's ridiculous and concludes the following. Aha. Uh -huh. This is a tactic advocated by national pollster and blogger one David Farrar back in 2012 that has come into its own now national has only a slim majority. It allows national to dilute the odds that a measure drafted by the opposition or minor party MPs, sorry chaps, that's their word, we don't think of you as minor, we think of you as excellent colleagues in the House, uh, pursuing uh, as your leader has said, the task of changing the government. And that's a good thing. Mr Speaker, it allows National to dilute the odds of something real coming out of the ballot paper. Real, like building state houses, or taking children out of cars into warm, dry homes, or making sure that our rental accommodation is fitted within the parameters of the statute's amendment bill, sir. I take your guidance as always. New Zealanders aren't stupid. As much as national strategists might think you could fool all of the people all of the time, New Zealand is next year going to prove the age-old dictum that although you may be able to fool all of the people some of the time, possibly for about seven years, in the end, sense catches up and enough of the some of the people cast their ballot for a change of government, rising up in indignation, sir about the trifling with the House that has been vested upon us by Newt Caraco, wasting members' time, and it's time to denuclearise. This statute's amendment bill, sir, is a living, breathing example of a railway train that is leaving the station that could have had a couple more carriages on it. The carriages which are on it at the moment include things as important as merging community trusts of reinforcing the powers of ministers to direct state-owned enterprise, important additions to the powers of corrections officers and police in respect of bail, and many other drastically important measures that we're tidying up through this legislation. Why, oh why, could it have not found room in its heart for Nuke Caraco's bill? Think of the hours of house time, sir, that you could have spent enjoying yourself in other pursuits, knowing the country was safe 
and that the order paper had been denuclearised. Thank you, sir. I call